Guys, we are working on the Lexus IS220D. We apply to any cars. We added noise on the near side front. Remove the wheel. Examine all around the wheel arch. Sometimes you can see one of your coil spring snap tires catching the wheel arch. No sign of any rubbing anywhere until we check already the ball joints that's your wishbone ball joints a little bit the gap on the anti-roll bar everything is fine but what I noticed this side of the disc we got little lip so when the pad were inside the disc, you make two lip on the sides. This smooth little lip, but when I go behind the disc, the lip is much larger than this side. So wear out this disc wear out from inside more than outside. Why the caliper sliders they don't work? So this doesn't put the pressure equally on the both side of the disc. So the piston put more pressure on this side. The slider doesn't work. So you get, I don't know, you can see from here, is a lip, the corner, this side, yeah. This is the lip from inside. So if the slider doesn't work on the caliber, you get where too much from this side and pushing the pads against the disc from behind yeah. you get plenty and if you look at it through here oh it's not that easy the pad in a pad wear out much quicker than out of one when we remove it we're going to show you on part two so this apply to any car, just crack the 14 mil, sometimes 12, 13, sometimes this nut here is turning, you must hold it, but in this case we got the little lip, it doesn't let it turn. So you remove the caliper, make sure you don't put the pressure on the brake hose, you put your caliper rest on here on the wishbone so it doesn't stretch because they are so old, so it might crack the brake pipe so when on the part two I'm going to show you you know what you just remove these two then you get the little screwdriver push it towards the disc and the pads to push the piston we are working on the Lexus but it's general for any cars that they carry the disc so as I explained for you in the part one as far as we see the disc wear out this side wear out more than the back we realized the caliper doesn't work properly and the sliders here the seized you look at the sliders the little pistons go forward and backwards so they're seized up and I couldn't push the pistons there's a pistons back so as you see the pads this side the outer pad look at the thickness of the pad and the inner one So now you notice why the noise was there, wasn't working properly and always engaging and every time you break, you make a noise because the piston didn't go back. So if you take the pad off, you can see the pads, how thick is it, it's a metal bit, that's, that's a friction area, let's push against the disc, little lip here, just a bit, look at the other one, it's almost nothing left and if you look at them I'm sorry I must get the torch yeah see look at the lips on the side of it this side 
on this side it's quite deep so in this case the disc is be wear out so we need a new disc but you can get away with the, just changing the pads but as the disc deeper this side your pads gonna reach to the lip quicker so you need another change in the pads so as I told you you put the caliper there so to avoid damaging the brake holes in this case maybe we must remove the pistons from the housing clean it or we get the clamp we push the piston back because the new pads is not gonna fit so uh, if you got a little bit of experience on the cars so you can do it yourself otherwise you know they, you need a mechanic so to remove these pistons it's not that easy but to put in it back is a little bit more difficult because the o-ring is inside you can find a kit caliper kit you remove this piston they clean it with a really fine sandpaper in circular motion not the straight otherwise you know that the oil is going to leak the brake fluid is going to leak and these sliders we're going we're gonna to release them clean them and put, put them back with the new pads on this case so maybe next pad changing uh, we need a new disc with it but as you can see how bad is it this one and the inner one so the sliders didn't work so the pistons was pushing more towards the inner pads than the outer one so guys uh, see you on part three when we get the pads uh, i'm going to show you how to change the pads and how to um, clean this one release this one and the pistons see you later guys bye bye guys we are in part three braking problem we're working on the lexus but all the cars the same so as i explained last time we remove it we realize that this gone because of the pads on even where pistons were seized and the sliders were seized so in this case what i did i just put this bolt back as holding the caliper put my adjustable next to it like this and then I tap this one so the slider moved as you see it's extended but this one it doesn't move at all so it's, it's difficult we need a carrier for this so what uh, I'm attempting to heat up this part that piston is stuck in it heating it up a little bit put the, the wet cloth here because that's a grommet dust cover it doesn't let the dust get to the pistons otherwise it gets seized but this one has seized because nobody serviced it before so we got the gas here what we do this section here but before we must put a little cloth here with it wet so we just heat it up and cool it down heat it up because we don't want to burn this one and uh, i'll show you the other things i wanted to do this is a gauge and pin for the bigger pistons it is a truck but unfortunately the studs i've got here is a 14 so i made a slide hammer they call it if this one was 14 I would screw this one here by tapping it backwards and forwards because we've got enough space to use as a slide hammer so it pulls this piston out but we don't have a 13 mm studs this is 14 mm studs so this one didn't work so if the heating doesn't work what I need to do I need to get the 13 mm studs to make this slide hammer heat it up and keep handling it backwards to remove this piston out 
now what I do, I just heat up this one, put the cloth here, and then I've got a little bit heavy duty, I put it here, water pump plier, and I'm gonna heat it with a solid hammer instead of the wooden block. The wooden block, this one come out. We were lucky. We don't know if we're gonna be lucky for this one or not. So this is a part three, still we are on this car. So uh, as soon as as soon as I remove this piece, uh, I'm gonna get the video clip and then show you how to push the piston back on here and how to lubricate and clean it. So guys, see you later for today. We're lucky, beautiful sunshine again today. So I'm out, bye. Hello gentlemen and ladies, uh, we managed to remove these pins, as I described for you, I just heat it up. Then they cool it down with the water again, heat it up again, bang it. So this is the top one I could manage to remove, it's quite bad, it just, we are lucky we could remove this one, otherwise we have to get a carrier. I work on the trucks and other vehicles, vans before. If it goes, you can no way you can get rid of this one. Even if you hit it, you're gonna deshape it. You're gonna damage this one. So the pistons they're not gonna travel, just square inside. So we are lucky. It come out with just a little bit hit. This is a bone one. I remove it. It wasn't that bad. Well, it was difficult, but not as bad as the top one. The top pins, the sliders. As I told you, there are sliders here. It's and one on the top. Yeah. So uh, I told you I'm going to show you how to do the push the piston back. In this case, we were lucky because the piston wasn't seized. It is hard because I work on the the other vehicles before. When you got the heavy the, the caliper, especially it was a uh, Skoda and uh, I think it was Volkswagen. They got the, that heavy heavy pistons on the top. So no way you can push it back with the screwdrivers like a normal changing pads. So it's easy, you know when I just turn the clamp if you see the pistons going back look I put little pads the old pads here to hold hold it so you can push the pistons back right away but remember when you put the new pads you must pump the brake don't forget you must pump the brake when everything finished you must pump the brake so the pistons sit next there pads otherwise you're gonna have a gap there and then if you drive it off you can unfortunately have an accident so I remove the clamp these are old pads I put there just to square my clamp here we go the piston is right in look at that so now my new pads gonna sit we are happy and we are lucky the piston is not that bad the o-rings is okay as I explained before when the brake fluid come through this pipe push the piston forward piston push the pads forward as soon as the pad stick to the one side of the disc that's here one side of the disc on the back so it doesn't have no space to go In that time we got this pulling motion here on the caliper it pulled towards the second pad so they operate together so they bite this disc together so the more pressure equal pressure sorry equal pressure on both sides of the disc so if this is slide this is this pulling one you cannot operate properly so it is wearing one side the piston side that is pushing so it's pushing forward and pulling same time i don't know how to explain it maybe other guys you know got a better video clip you can watch but this is how the uh, caliper works on the cars and don't forget what i did you must remove the you must remove the the brake fluid reservoir cap This one, when this car is here, or other cars are different, you remove this one, 
so when you push the piston back I always leave it here I don't forget because if I want to close the bonnet it's not gonna let me see that something is there even if I forget about it I just always leave it here if you look at the oil now the oil is right up because I push the pistons back so if the oil gonna overlap and just overflow I just with the syringe I get some oil out and just throw it away but that's okay so when we push the piston back again pump the brakes the oil is gonna drop again but don't forget when you put everything back together new pads you clean the pins grease them you can put a copper grease on them they call it anti-seize copper grease when you put everything back together don't forget pump the brakes till you break it hard and then you can start driving or road test it or bedding the new pads so uh, when I put everything back I'm gonna take a little video clip for you guys again bye and guys uh, as I told you on the previous uh, videos when you feed the pads you push the pedal you just pop it in look the pedal went right in again now it get hot so my pistons now engage with the pads so now you push it right in that's it you turn it off look at the oil a little bit up you must get rid of some of the brake fluid because if I do this side the offside front the oil is gonna come up so we need to get rid of some of this fluid so I feed the new pads this copper grease now the slide is working look moving forward and backwards not that much because now these two sides pulling the pads towards the disc and the pistons pushing the pads against the disc that's it that's turning and engaging when you want to we didn't damage the pipe it's not kinking or anything it's right it's not catching anywhere so job done you just put the wheel back why right.